Hello everyone, Mr. Canadian Dad here again with another review of another watch model from Reactor. This is my heavy water digital tide model. On an interesting note, this watch was the first watch that Jimmy Olmos designed and built after he left Freestyle to, work, to uh, found the Reactor company. This watch is really quite unique in design, very different and distinct. Quite a gutsy move to come up with uh, this watch as your first, first watch at a new company. This watch is called the Heavy Water Model for a couple of reasons, I imagine. Number one, because of the, the name that uh, also is in line with the uh, nuclear or atomic tie style brand. The second reason why I think it's called the Heavy Water Model is because of its specific design its, and its main intended benefit. It has the unique airflow design which allows moisture it's raised the watch off your wrist and so it allows moisture to wick away or evaporate underneath your wrist. As the watch sits on your wrist you can see that it sits high on your wrist based on these two wings on the watch or arms on the watch that raise it up on your wrist. This watch is a great and ideal watch for people that spend a lot of time in the water. It, being raised off your wrist that will limit the amount of rashes or fungus that you can get sometimes underneath your wrist when you uh, spend a lot of time in the in the water so that is a quite a nice feature of the watch there are four models of the heavy water um, watch they have the world tide or digital model which is this one they have the sunset or yellow model which I have and own as well they have the same model in red and they have the same analog model in black coral or black nitride plated. The specs common to all of the, the watches are the construction of the case. It is 316L stainless steel and it's in a really nice satin finish. It's not a shiny stainless steel finish but it's satin finish. Same with the clasp. It is 39.6 millimeters in diameter of the case. It is 18.4 millimeters thick, which is slightly thicker than the Poseidon model of the watch, which is 17 millimeters thick. Um, this is one of the things that uh, convinced me to buy the Poseidon model, because if it was thinner than my heavy water model, I thought, okay, that's not too thick that I could probably stand to wear that. Um, it does sit high on your wrist, and when you're wearing a shirt sleeve, it does tend to rub on the shirt sleeve so be aware of that it's not probably a great watch to wear if you wear long sleeve shirts to uh, cut with cuffs at, at work during the day I, it does bother me sometimes because it grabs on my shirt it's 119 grams in weight it's 31.3 millimeters wide at the lugs and it's 21.6 millimeters wide at the clasp it has super luminova hands and dial markings it has the triple o-ring screw down crown on the analog version and they're all rated at 200 meters depth they all have the forged concave shaped case back which is extremely sturdy and rugged limits the torsion and the rigidity of it and gives it good rigidity they all have a quartz movement and they all have the mineral crystal which we discussed in our reactor DNA video if you want to check that out on the web. Some other features of these heavy water watches are the unidirectional bezel that is uh, really quite stiff. A little bit more stiff than some of my other models but that uh, is good in that it won't jog or move accidentally. I have several other different dive watches with rubber bands uh, wristbands and this one is quite nice because it has a, an enclosure system that's very nice and unique it's got a little ridge on the band here that when put underneath the wristband it locks itself and so it does not come undone during the day it's really quite nice it actually stays there closed and locked on the band all day and will not come undone which is nice you actually have to force it under to have it released this is quite different from let's say the citizen dive watches which I have which constantly no matter how much I I use these two uh, stainless steel bands to close it it constantly is is loosening and 
flopping out. The watch band also is made of a very supple and pliable polyurethane rubber, which is a little, not really slick to the touch. It resists cracking. It is also steel reinforced in the band, which is really quite nice. Once again, comparing this to the Citizen Echo Dive watch that I have, this band is not quite the same. You can just feel that it's harder and you will crack and split this, this band. I've done it um, and replaced this band once at least. It is similar though to the other Citizen Promaster dive watch which I also own. If you can look at the two here, these bands feel very much the same. The reactor watch band is a little thicker and a little bit more sturdy. This one's a little bit more delicate and a little bit more of a, a dress watch style, I imagine, um, because it is a little more delicate. The band also has a unique design to it. It has a bit of a concave flow to it so that while you wear it, it also will wick away moisture underneath the band and help to, to dry it out underneath. One other thing to note with the analog version of the watch is that it has slightly different color luminescence on the hands than it does on the numerals. And uh, that uh, helps you to see that at night. If you look at the manual, you can see, I hope you can see here, that the hands are slightly a different color than the other markings on the watch. It also has a neat trapezoid shaped day marking on it, so you can see it's April the 1st here. The specific features that the World Tide digital version has is it has the two time zones with auto calendar. It has an air and water sensor on the side. It has four sealed buttons so that you can actually push these buttons while you're underwater. It has high and low tide time data for current and future dates out to 2099. It has tide data for 30 preset locations worldwide. It's got a memory for five custom tide locations that you can set and a custom uh, tide location that you can actually create for yourself. It has heat countdown timers with four settings. It's got a chronograph with one one hundredth of a second split timing. And it's got the EL backlight or electroluminescent backlight that's in an aqua green color for easy night viewing. Let's look a little bit more closely at some of the sample operations of the heavy water digital version. It's got four buttons on the watch. And they are button one, button two, button three, button four. And then the temperature sensor on the side. You can see on the face of the watch that you're told the date, the day, it's Friday, fourth month, zero day, and you can see that it says T1 up in the top, that's time one. It's 1241 here, and it gives me a quick indication of the tide times for the selection that I've set, which is Lahaina, Hawaii. If I toggle here with this button four, I can toggle between time one and time two. This is Hawaii time. So I can toggle back quick and quickly between time one and time two. If I hold the button down for three seconds, it will switch to time two, and now I'm on Hawaii time. So if I go to Hawaii, it's very simple to set the time to the second time. And now if I go and change modes, I can move from mode to the temperature mode. And it will give us uh, a temperature. You notice it jumped temperatures there for a second. Um, I had just washed the watch before I did my uh, display here and the last recorded temperature that it had was 66 degrees Fahrenheit which was the temperature of the water that I was washing it in. And now you can see the temperature, current temperature is about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason why it's 82 is because my house right now is set to about 71 degrees Fahrenheit. But because I've been holding it for a while, it senses the ambient air temperature around my body and so it uh, will be a little bit warmer because of that. You can set, change the offset on that if you uh, are wearing it and you know that the offset of the time, I'm sorry, the temperature is usually about 5 or 6 or 8 degrees or 10 degrees or whatever because you're a warm-blooded person. You can change the offset and, and plus or minus uh, a certain number of uh, degrees to be able to change that so you get an accurate temperature reading if you want. The second mode is tide. So this gives you a representation, a representation of the current tide status that we've got and uh, this is related to the 
the, the tide setting that I have in the, the next mode. But the nice thing about this is that you can, if you watch the top line, line one, you can see that if I push the up button here, I'm gonna go plus a day, so I go to April 2nd, and I can see the high tide times and the time, tide times for that day. I can go out day two, three, four, if I hold this down, it will fast scroll forward, and I can go as many days as I, as I want, April 17th, and then reset back to April 1st just by putting the, pushing the reset button at the bottom. Let's go to mode number two. This is the beach mode. I've got it set to Lahaina, Maui. And it tells me here that the latest high tide was at 2.45. Um, the next tide change is at 8.58 and then at 3.10 and at 9.23 tonight. And 3.10 is a high tide again. The five presets that you've got by pushing the button here, you can go from Lahaina to Santa Clara, or Santa Cruz, sorry, California, Santa Cruz Point, I've got Rincon, San Clemente, San Diego, and Lahaina. So you can set the five presets that you want. If you want to look at all the 30 presets, you hold the set button down here, hold this down, and I go to Honolulu. And here I can scroll through all the different 30 preset times. As you can see here, I've got San Juan, Recife, Rio de Janeiro, um, so all over the place, Bali, Sydney, Sendai, Miyaza, Hilo, Hawaii, and Lahaina. Next mode is the heat or countdown timer. You've got countdown start, you've got countdown up, and you've got uh, repeat. Countdown, so it'll, you can set it to you know if you want it to count down. I I set it have it set to a, a minute for exercising, and uh, the nice thing about that is that as it's counting down, it will chime on the last 10 seconds, and then I can start, stop, or repeat it. Chronograph here is your chronograph setting. You can start it with this button here. You see it counts the tenths and hundredths, and then the seconds, and then stop and reset, and then you can split time as well by pushing this button bottom here. Here's your alarms. The interesting thing about this is that you've got several different alarms that you can set. You've got a daily one, a daily two, you've got a weekly one, a weekly two, and then you've got a special event alarm that you can set. A dailies, I guess, you know, this is set for six o'clock for me to wake up. It's not turned on. There's my daily two, my weekly one, weekly two, and then I've got it set for my party. My birthday is the April 30th at five o'clock. You can set it going to the forward to the future. If I want to activate that alarm, I push the top button here. You can see now it's turned on. The alarm insignia is there, and then the nice reactor trefoil symbol shows up. That shows that you're on that special reminder setting. I'm going to turn that off. A couple of interesting comments that I'm going to add right now, which I do in some of my videos, are some things about this watch. The instructions for this watch are a little bit lacking. I find that they're not very descriptive on the tide setting and, and adjustments. They they can be a little bit confusing. They could be better, more detailed, but you know, with some, some playing around and research, you can usually figure it out. There is no indication of the battery life for the watch anywhere that I could find. I think it's a two to three year battery life. I have a buddy of mine that has this exact same watch. I bought this watch a year ago in Banff at uh, Stratton Jewelers, which is a great place to look for reactor watches. But it's a very comfortable watch to wear. You'll find that it can adjust to your wrist quite nicely. And once you get it locked into place, it stays put and is very, very comfortable. There you go. There's another review from Mr. Canadian Dad. Hope that you like it. And um, check out some of the other reviews that I have online, especially the new one up there on reactor DNA in general. Take care.